In Ginger West v. The State, Ginger is brought before Judge Caprio for a school zone violation on Douglas Avenue. Hello, Your Honor. Good morning, Ginger. You are charged with a school zone violation on Douglas Avenue. Yes. Ginger says she isn't sure she committed the offense because it might have been her husband driving the car and not her. The car is, however, registered in her name. Do you remember this? No. It might have been my husband in the car but the car's registered in my name, mm -hmm. so. She says her husband isn't in court because he's preparing to go for a job interview. He actually is waiting to go to a job interview. I was gonna say, I thought maybe he was waiting outside in the car. No. Sent, <laughs> sent you in. He sent you down yourself. He said, okay, you go. When asked by Judge Caprio to speak, she tearily confesses that her family is about to become homeless and she doesn't remember much of the past week's events. Is there we anything you wanna tell me about this? We are in the middle of possibly being homeless and I just don't remember any of it. My brain is, I've been trying to find a house for two months. I, mean, think it needs I just tell me. Just relax. We're not here. We're not here to. I can't help it. Sorry. Judge Caprio tells her to calm down as he isn't interested in intimidating her, but he will try to help if he can and asks her what the problem is. We're not here to intimidate you or any of that stuff. Right? Just, just relax. Okay? If we can help you, we'll help you. There you go. So what is it you want to tell me? What did you just get emotional about? Ginger tells the judge that the house she is staying in with her family has been sold and they've been trying to get another place for the past two months with no luck. She has bad credit and her husband was laid off recently, which makes the possibility of being homeless that much more real. She admits she does not have the funds to pay for the ticket. They sold the house we're living in, looking for two months for a house, and I can't have bad credit, so nobody even wants to look at anything. And then my husband got laid off yesterday. You I don't have money to pay for the ticket. <laughs> to make matters worse, Ginger is disabled, which means she cannot get a job to help with the family's finances. Do you work? No, I'm disabled, and they actually cut my disability because apparently from nine or seven ninety four to thirty two dollars this month without me knowing it when it rains it pours. Judge Caprio is moved by her dilemma and tells her the court will pay for her ticket with funds from the Philomena Fund. A fund he started in honor of his mom to help people who need it. Ginger is very grateful for the help as that is one less thing to worry about. Your husband's not working, you're not feeling well. Listen, we're gonna <laughs> use the funds to pay for your ticket from what I call the Philomena Fund that's named after my mom. People all over the world send in money to the court asking that, yeah, we, use our Rhode Island. that we use our discretion in helping people that are in need. You certainly qualify, so as I indicated earlier, the Philomena Fund is named after my mom. We're going to charge you $50. It's going to be paid from the Philomena Fund. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good luck. In Ksenia Fernandez versus the state, Ksenia is before the court for parking tickets she never paid for over the years. Good morning. Good morning. It's a lot of tickets. We're gonna go back 10 years ago. You had five parking tickets you never showed up for. And they were on Vinton Street, East Transit, Plain, Garnett, and Amherst Streets. You covered the entire city. When Judge Caprio asks her for her testimony, Ksenia tells him she has had a hard life. Her mom kicked her out of the house when she was 13 years old. She admits she is guilty of all the tickets she had over the years because she had done overnight parking because she had no place to sleep, speeding amongst other violations. So what do you want to tell me? That's when you were driving a Honda. A Honda, yeah. yeah. And you were living on Evergreen Drive. I've just had a hard life. Like my mom kicked me out when I was 13 and I've just been staying like in different places all over Providence, Rhode Island. So yeah, I, I, I'm guilty of all the tickets because I know that I've done overnight parking. I've done speeding. My life is always like in a rush. I'm always like rushing everywhere. Let me ask you a question. Ksenia tells the court she is currently working two jobs, one of which is in a group home for adults living with disabilities. When asked if she has children, she says she has two boys and they are now living with her as she just got an apartment after living in a shelter for a while. I am working two jobs right now. Um, I was working at AAA um, for three years. I just left it to work with adults that have intellectual disabilities now, so I'm working in a group home. Um, and I also do Dunkin' Donuts on the side. Do you have any children? I have two boys, 19 and 12. They live with you? They live with me now. I just uh, got an apartment. I was in a shelter since October of last you were, year. You were what? In a shelter on Broad Street. So I just got my apartment last week. Ksenia says she is trying to get her life together after all the blows life has dealt her. She talks a bit about being in a violent relationship, which she claims affects her even now. She says she wants to pay for the tickets, but it has been so hard for her financially. 
I'm trying to get my life together. I've always tried to work hard and do the right thing, but always something just knocks me over. You know, I was in a domestic violence relationship as well, which I still wasn't steady then, but I'm just like more unsteady now after that. So it's just been a hard life. And I want to pay the tickets, but it's just been hard. I always need money for something else. Judge Caprio, after listening to her, commends her on her upbeat nature and positive attitude after all she's been through. He decides to dismiss the parking tickets from 10 years ago. Remarkably well, you've got a good brain. And in spite of the problems you may have had in the past, you know, you've got a good attitude. I do. You know, and I'm glad to see you upbeat. I'm going to dismiss the parking tickets. They go back 10 years ago. I'm not going to hold you responsible. I appreciate that very much. For the overnight parking tickets from some years ago, summing up to about $1,000, Judge Caprio decides to also let her off the hook after she confesses that they were from the time she was homeless and had to stay with friends and park on the street because they had no parking space. You got, you got a bunch of overnight parking tickets on Vinton Street. That was a time I was homeless as well. Uh, my friend was letting me stay there and he didn't have a parking space, so I had to park on the street. So let me see, you're a young kid, you're homeless, you're staying at a friend's place, there's nowhere to park, you can't park over and let you park the car on the street. Sometimes in people's parking lot. Just those... Time, oh, I'm sorry. Just those tickets were $1,000. I know. I'm gonna I was them. gonna have a heart attack. Thank you so them. much. For the other overnight parking ticket, Ksenia tells the judge she got it while staying at the shelter because there was no place to park her car without it getting towed. She claims she parked by the roadside all through her stay in the shelter and doesn't know why she was given a ticket one night charge is dismissed. That was on Broad Street. I was in the shelter. I parked there every... They want me to park across the street in the church, but then my car was going to get towed from there, and I didn't have money to release my car from impound. And then in the back, there's no parking space for me, so I had to park in front of the street, inside of the shelter. Oh, you were at the shelter? Yes. This is the one on Broad Street. That was one yeah. night. They just gave me a ticket one night. I mean, I was parking there since, like, October. How do you feel about that, Inspector? She got away with it for so long, Judge. I, I did. I really did. I was like, great, no tickets. the fact she was in the shelter, Judge. The city would move to dismiss the parking ticket. Judge Caprio uses money sent by Mr. Elton to pay for some parts of Ksenia's other tickets, and at the end of the day, she only has $150 left to pay, which is very relieving for her. There's a gentleman by the name of Danny Eltman, actually a senior mortgage banker from Chicago, Illinois, and he sent me this wonderful letter. He said life has been pretty good for him, but he wants to help other people, so he actually sent me a check for $100 to help anyone that needed help using my discretion for whom I would use this uh, this for. And it was interesting because he said he wanted to give $50, but his he told his employer, so his employer said that they would match his 50, and so they sent 100. At any rate, I have $100 that I'm gonna use my discretion for and place it, your tickets, because I think you would be somebody worthwhile for this, and I think be the intent for which, for which this gentleman, Mr. Eltman, sent me this, so. So I'm gonna apply the $100 so you're going to have a balance of $150. That's everything? That's right. Okay, that works for me. Thank you so much. In Marcella Wright versus the state, Marcella has 12 unpaid tickets, which had led to her car being booted. Good morning. Good morning. Marcella, your motor vehicle has been booted. You have 12 tickets. Yes, sir. None of which have been paid. I just paid um, $75 to get in here to see you. You paid $75 to whom? to the lady out there. I had a $75 ticket that I tried to pay, but she said it didn't go through. So it, it got kicked back to my account and I had to pay it again. So I just paid her a $75. She says she moved to Rhode Island after fleeing Florida because of domestic violence and all the tickets are from Florida. So Marcella, tell me a little bit about yourself. You live, uh, where do you live? You live in Rhode Island? Now I do. I fled Florida for domestic violence. So all them tickets. <laughs> To Florida. I don't have a Marcella breaks down in court and says she has to move from her house today or the sheriff is going to seize her stuff. She has no place to go and can't afford to pay for the tickets. I gotta move. I just came for a payment plan. I just want a payment plan. I can't lie to you in my tickets. I can't lie to you. I just need a payment plan. That's it. I don't have no fight. I don't have nothing. <laughs> a payment plan. That's it. <laughs> I can't today. Mm -hmm. Can't. I gotta move. I gotta move today. What the sheriff is coming to take my stuff out. The guy selling the house. I just want a baby plant so I can. Can't. I don't have no fight, judge. I don't have no fight at all. I'm sorry. Today is hard. I'm missing work. I have no money. I have no home. I gotta do something. Just a baby plan. Please. That's all I'm asking. Marcella has an eight year old son who stays with her. 
She says she was preparing to move her stuff into a car, which she parked on the street because the new house owner was renovating the garage when her car got booted. How many? I have a son. He lives with you? Yeah. How old is he? Eight. Are you working? Uh, I work for American Safety Program. I train CNAs mm -hmm. and I have to move today because the guy sold the house and not for eviction because he wants possession of the apartment getting my stuff out and it come and there's a boot on my car this morning. It was out on the street only because I had to move it because the guy for, that owns the house now, he's doing the, the parking lot. I had to put it out on the, on the street. street. You need me to do I don't want to get my stuff out this house. I don't have it in the I don't have it. Right. <laughs> Judge Caprio is quite moved by her story and dire circumstances. Marcella has no place to go and can't even move her car now because it has been booted. So just relax and answer my questions. Do you have a place to go to? No, I don't. I'm so, sorry. I'm so sorry. Now your motor vehicle is booted, so you can't even move the motor vehicle. Do you have any money to pay for the boot? I can get a have my sister bring me $100. That's all I have. Judge Caprio finds her $100 for the boot and $200 for her parking tickets instead of $800. He tells her these fines will be paid by the contributions of generous people who send funds to him to use in helping people. Marcella no longer has to worry about her tickets. You have family here, you have a sister. Yeah, she's at work right now, but she can come and bring it to me. Marcella, I have a pretty good indication of what your circumstances are, and I'm not going to ask you to go into them because I understand it's very personal. But I want you to know that there are an awful lot of very compassionate people in this country and in this world, actually. Wonderful person from California named Patricia Williams and a gentleman from North Fork, uh, Norwalk, Connecticut by the name of Matthew Delgamo. They have made contributions to the court. So I'm going to fine you $100 for the boot, and that's going to be paid by Patricia Williams. And I'm going to fine you $200 for the tickets, and that's going to be paid by Matthew Delgamo because of the generosity of those wonderful people. <clears throat> that you're going to be able to get your vehicle back today, leave you some money to take care of your son, and hopefully get you relocated. In Charles Newton versus the state, Charles is charged with going through a red light on Pleasant Valley Parkway, Providence. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you today? You're Mr. Newton, I presume, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, You're charged with going through a red light on Pleasant Valley Parkway. Charles admits to this and says he was on his way to an appointment to the hospital when it happened. He is a veteran who served in Vietnam. Do you remember this? Uh, yes, sir, I do. I do, because uh, I was on my way to an appointment at the VA hospital. Are you a veteran? Yes, sir, I am. A Vietnam veteran. Judge Caprio claims to have very strong feelings toward people who served in the military, and particularly those who served in Vietnam. He tells Charles he's going to dismiss the case against him in recognition of his service to America. I have uh, very strong feelings about people who serve in the service but particularly strong feelings about people who served in Vietnam. It was a long time ago, well, it seems so anyway. I think that, I honestly, in my heart, think that they are deserving of special recognition <clears throat> on several levels, and certainly on this level. Because quite frankly, it was a simple violation of going through a red light. Whether you went through it or not, I'm really not interested. I'm going to dismiss it. Oh, well, I, right. I very much appreciate that, Your Honor. In recognition of your service, to our country. Tell me a little bit about your experiences in Vietnam. Charles talks about his experience in the Navy in Vietnam. He says he had the duty of monitoring shipments and preventing things from being shipped in or out. Uh, well, sir, I, I, I wasn't in country. I, mean, I was a Navy guy, but we were on the blockade and just keeping things from getting shipped out or shipped in and also offering, uh, you know, lighting up the sky at night with star burst shells keep the guys busy at night, don't let them sleep, catch it and load it on board and drop it off at some neutral zone. Before leaving the courtroom, Charles talks about the daily increase in the number of homeless people in Rhode Island and other places. He says most veterans are homeless and it's so sad to see, especially as most of them are disabled and he wishes there was something that could be done to help. Uh, Judge, I, I have something I'd like to bring to your attention, and I know you already know this, but I'm driving around the city uh, every day. I, I don't know what to, th uh, to, 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 to do about it. I will think about it, but there's people in every corner with their cups and stuff, and very, very, very distraught. You know, the veteran, a uh, fellow brother of mine, He's in a wheelchair, one leg, right, right here on. Five, ten years ago, you'd see one or two of them, but now they're at every intersection. I just wish there's 
something more that we could do as a people, uh, individually, collectively, as a nation, because it's not just here in Rhode Island, I know that. Judge Caprio agrees with him that the matter is indeed serious, but says there is no single solution yet. He says most people and organizations try to help by providing food, jobs and shelter, but the problem is a long way from being solved. I wish there were a simple solution to the problem, you know, many people are trying to help. There's a program in Providence actually called Hand Up. Ah. And they give them $50 if they'll clean the city and mm -hmm. then we have uh, some service agencies like Amos House, they feed uh, and we have crossroads. They help out as much as they can. But it's very unfortunate. I wish, I don't know who has, I certainly don't have the answer if uh -huh. I did. I, Judge Caprio says people can, however, help by pointing homeless people in the right direction, letting them know about available help like that provided by the Salvation Army, which provides housing for people amongst other aids. In any way we can, whether it's by helping them with money, sometimes it's just by giving, point, pointing them in the right direction. Yeah. For example, the Salvation Army has housing for people. Judge Caprio also does his bit in the courtroom by letting those who come before him know of available help they can capitalize on because of circumstances. Charles thanks the judge for his service to humanity before leaving the courtroom. We actually, they actually gave us some cards and say if you have anyone needs housing, you know, or temporary lodging, they would help. And so there are many agencies that are trying to help. Sometimes the problem is that people have that they condition getting help. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very sad. Thank you for your concern. And I think we all should try to help those who are less okay. fortunate than us. So. It was a pleasure to meet you this morning, Judge, and, and, and thank you for your, for your, uh, your service as well. Have a good day. Thank you.